Well, good day, everyone. So it's pretty rare and unlikely that you'll ever need to uh, repivot a center wheel. But recently, a student broke a center wheel when he was replacing the cannon pinion. This is a Russian watch that, for those of us in the United States of America, we cannot get parts for easily, if at all. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to demonstrate this technique to you. It's a bit of a misnomer to call it repivoting as the technique requires us to drill out the whole pinion and replace the whole arbor, both pivots actually, as well as the extended post on which the cannon pinion sits. But before we start, what we need to do is get proper measurements of, of lengths and diameters this picture here shows that the back pivot is 0 0.50 millimeters and the front pivot is 0.65 millimeters. Before we get drilling, I, in a lathe, uh, grind off both pivots, uh, front and back, and also reduce the, the length of the arbor by about two-tenths of a millimeter, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Now, as in my other repivoting videos, I start all my drilling operations with striking a perfect center in the, the center of the piece that I'm going to be drilling in. Once I am satisfied with the center, then I get to drilling and I drill all the way through. It takes a little bit of time, but eventually I get there. At this point, I take a piece of blued steel and we're going to cut down a section that is the same diameter as the drill bit that I used to drill out the pinion. I hadn't mentioned earlier uh, the diameter of the drill and I had made a drill that was 0.65 millimeter, the same as the front pivot of the wheel. Um, it could have been any uh, measurement between 0.65 and 0.50, so long as it was a little bit larger or the same size as the smaller of the two pivots. Here the pinion fits on a little bit further than what I would like to to get a good friction fit. So I'm going to extend my cut a little bit further and make it a, just a, maybe a hundredth of a millimeter larger so I get a, a little bit tighter fit.
at this point you can see that the the blued steel stock that I'm using is the same diameter as the arbor of the original uh, wheel as you can see up close to the pinion so I'm just going to cut a notch in this a, a v-shaped notch in this so we can part off the wheel and uh, finish the other side Then while holding on to the back pivot, we're going to reduce the front to the diameter of the front pivot as well as um, the section of arbor that extends beyond the plate where the cannon pinion slips on. Now you can see early on here I'm taking very light cuts and um, getting essentially dust off, off of the arbor. And the reason why is because the, the arbor or the piece of steel is extending so far out that it has a tendency to flex. And because of this, you have to take very light cuts or you risk the breaking your graver, chipping the carbide graver, or worse yet, uh, breaking the arbor altogether. But eventually we get through the, the outer layer and the shavings start coming off of it like we like to see. Now you're going to see up close to the pinion where I'm trimming up there that I'm leaving a, a little bit of a step um, going out to the diameter of the blued steel that I've initially put in there. The reason why I create this step is just for surety that um, while I may be confident in how tight and secure the arbor is in the pinion um, there are times such as when we're putting on the cannon pinion or taking off the hands or taking off the cannon pinions there's uh, ever so small of a chance that the arbor will pull out of the hollow pinion we've created this little step will create something that will stop it against the the base plate as we're pulling off the cannon pinion and it will also prevent it from pushing out the other side when we put on the hands or put on the cannon pinion and lastly while we're chucked up onto the pinion we will finish out the the back pivot and reduce it from the diameter that it is to the 0 0.50 and reduce the excess length to a more appropriate length. Actually, the last step of the process would be finishing off the pivots with Jasper, which I don't show in this video, but I show in other videos. And once they are brought up to a polish, which I use Jasper stone on, um, then we're ready to trial fit it and uh, make sure that it's in good running order in the mechanism. So here you have it. I thank you all for watching. I hope you found this helpful and perhaps entertaining or both. 
And for those of you that are my faithful subscribers, I appreciate your patience with me. I hope to have more content out as my time and energy allows. Thanks again. We'll catch you the next time.